Motion at the bottom line of public session. Yeah. Second. Roll call vote. Judy, yes. Vincent, yes. Brigger, yes. Mason, yes. Barnum, yes. Unanimous decision. Uh, we are now moving in. Now it is uh, almost 6 o'clock, Tamla time, so we will start our regular meeting at 6 o'clock. So anyone that wanted to be here for the start can. It being 6 o'clock, Tamil time, uh, we'll continue with our meeting. And uh, first on the agenda is public input. Do we have any public input? Ed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is uh, Ed Camo off camera. What was the exemption you went in for, and did you seal the minutes? It wasn't listening. Uh, we did not seal the minutes, and we were in non-public session starting at 5.30 under RSA 91A2. Three, C. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other public input? Somebody's trying. Is somebody trying to talk? We're here, but not, no input at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, moving on to new business, uh, we have a first draft on a harassment policy that was sent out to the rest of the board. Um, I thought it met the needs. Well, it was actually the format that Primex had given us with the one additional caveat at the end. I, I'm sorry, my computer's not quite up yet. Um, that said, if it was a member of the Board of Selectmen oh, yeah. that was being reported that an outside agency would be pulled in. And that was a caveat they put in their email regarding that. So if we like the first draft the way it is, my idea is send it back to Primex for a once more over, then we can accept it. Because they'll review it. They don't charge us. I thought it was very thorough. It was very short compared to the eight pages we have in our personnel manual. Mm -hmm. And it covers everything. It covers everything. Yeah, which is very well written. Yeah. And then if it's approved, then we would send that back out to our employees to have them sign off that they've received a new copy of it. Right. And I like the reporting aspect of it. There's yeah. no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's you've got to report it. Yep. You see it, you've got to report it. So uh, what happens? It goes to Primex? If everybody approves the first draft, I would think we could send it to Primex. I can take the first draft off the paper. Anyone uh, have any objection to it being sent to Primex? There being no objection, please do. Thanks, Becky. Karen, would you take care of that? Absolutely. Do you want it without the draft, or do you think you can pull the draft? Um, I'll try. It's a, it's a watermark. Okay. So. Yeah, I can try it. Okay. Uh, next, we have a capital asset asset policy review, and this was one that was drafted a number of years ago, uh, which we may need to remind people that we need to follow. Well, I pulled up the news, the newest. Let me see if I, this will open. Like I said, I'm running a little slow here tonight. Um, because I was surprised to see computers on there for five years, because I don't know of a computer anywhere that lasts five years on the longevity of it. Um, but I'm surprised. Under GP, mm -hmm. GPA, whatever, they still do it. Um, but the buildings and stuff, they've changed a little bit, that they're not keeping them like 40 years out and stuff anymore. Suggested, I mean, I can send it to you if you want to review it again some other time since my computer doesn't want to behave tonight. It's a suggested capital list. My question on our list that we have the heavy equipment that we have, does that fall under heavy trucks? Yeah. So the backhoe, the loader, and all that? Six wheeler is heavy equipment. Well, no, but is, but is a backhoe? 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I wouldn't know that because when it says heavy trucks, I look at heavy trucks. Right. Well, I think it should say something like heavy equipment. Well, that's what I was wondering. Should it say heavy trucks slash equipment, light trucks slash light equipment? Well, it says heavy vehicles. Right. So it should be equipment. I would just say equipment. That covers yeah. trucks, cars. Vehicle slash equipment? Because some might be a dump truck, right? Right. And a digger thing. But some might. Well, I mean, yeah, the vehicle can, is, can be equipment. You know, they're, yeah, like they're, a loiter. Your dump truck's loiter. equipment. Right. Your fire truck's equipment. The one thing that's not on there is the sewer system. Is the what? The sewer system for life expectancy. Mm. <laughs> And believe it or not, a sewer disposal <laughs> work system has only got a life expectancy of 25 years. Yeah. Wow. So we might want to add that, is all. Yeah, I would think so. And then the other thing that somebody suggested that I don't, I didn't pull mine up, is roads on there? Roads? Mm-hmm. No, the bridge is domain infrastructure. Right. Well, that's what I was concerned about, because what does the infrastructure cover? I wasn't Pretty broad. Good. Yeah. What What's the time frame on that? Because I didn't have. Uh, I don't know. Forty, 40 years. years. Okay. Then that's what they're covering. They must be covering roads because that's what it is. Dams. Although dams are fifty years, and levees and canal linings are fifty years. So was there anything else, Becky, that needed to change? Um, I was just asking because when I look at what is suggested, it's a much more detailed list. I mean, it's fine. It's like we something else we don't think of and we really don't like to think of is um, the sidewalks. Yeah. They're a different time frame than um, infrastructure, but and we certainly didn't get 40 years out of that, that up there. <laughs> So do you want me to find a more... Um, well, no, I think that's broad list. enough and we can do it. I just think we need to add the sewer system on. Okay. And if I'm doing heavy vehicle slash equipment, do you want me to do the same for light vehicles? I would, because, yep. you know, yep. the garden truck we it. have is not considered heavy equipment. It doesn't go by cost, it goes by classification. Because that's where I was concerned because we do have a lot more infrastructure that we, like the playground. Playgrounds are only uh, the ten years. Um, hang on, I just have it. It's twenty years. Twenty years. Sidewalks are twenty years. Should we add playgrounds? I mean, I don't know how detailed you want. I've got a very detailed list here, but I mean, it goes into flagpoles and everything. I don't think we oh, need no. to get that detailed. <laughs> I think we just do the basic, but I mean, we do have two playgrounds that have been paid for. By the town? No, well, they're owned by the town. That's right. Right. Yeah. Right. One's fairly new, and I don't know when this one went in. Wow. Well. This paper is in the hole. Well. I was gonna say, yeah. Over well, time. only the thing is, is, it just keys somebody to look and say, "My God, not just by we the color, because this stays fade. in the shade. It may not fade, but well, it might not be safe anymore. So, nope. it might be good to have to I mean, that could be considered under the infrastructure, but twenty and forty years is a big difference. Yeah, infrastructure is forty, playgrounds are twenty. Well, so. I'm sure, they'll have no ideas what playground is in twenty years. There used to be a stick in the rock. <laughs> and a puddle. And a puddle, yeah. And your bicycle. Your puddle. Um, I'm wondering about uh, stuff at the transfer station. Uh, whether The landfill, it says, landfill disposal systems is 25 years. And we don't have anything on there either. Mm -hmm. It falls in under that infrastructure. That's why I say I understand yeah. the infrastructure, but how detailed do you want to get? That's the thing. I, I agree. Maybe it's like sprinklers. You know, this building isn't sprinkled, so we don't have to worry about it. But sprinklers have to be replaced every 50 years. Yeah. So, I mean, it might behoove us to put the landfill in there and say, you know, 25 years. We've already gone by that, haven't we? No. 
Not quite. Huh? Because that wasn't that a 20-year bond? It's yeah, it's going to be paid off this year, next year. Next year. School's paid off this year. It might be who is to put those bigger systems in, into it. Well, but it, this is capital assets for accounting purposes or for insurance purposes? Accounting. Gassing. Annual Gassing. auditing Gassing. process. And that's what I looked up. It says capital access of local governments. And it gives you a whole list. And it was printed out in 220, so. Yeah. I mean, at least it goes, if you're going to town meeting or something, to say, this the life I'm expectancy was 25, we're on year 30, we really should start thinking about doing something. Yeah. Well? Yep. Yeah. We get the capital asset list. So damp fill. You're gonna add I'm adding sewer. sewer system 25 years, landfill 25 years. Yeah. Okay. I just my concern is bridges. That was one of our biggest capital expenses. Oh, I know. Point. That's considered in the infrastructure, though. Okay. Believe it or not, they don't list bridges, bridges. as separate. They list. Right. Huh. Well. They list waterways as levees, canal linings, dams, concrete, steel, sheet, pot, sheet pile, and earthen embankment. Easements, drainage systems, water systems, and sewer systems. And then roads, paved, asphalt, non-asphalt, and there's two asphalt, no. Yeah, non-paved, paved, asphalt rule, and asphalt ur urban. But they do not list bridges. I figure they figure this, the states have enough requirements on bridges as it is. Oh, 70 years. Yeah, but as far as an asset goes, it's one of your big assets. <laughs> well, right, I was just thinking as far as like knowing ahead of time what things you've got coming down the road, it's handy to... Mm -hmm. I'm just going by what Google says and it says 70 years. Oh, there you go. The average lifespan of a highway bridge is about 70 years, majority of bridges. Yeah. Well, you can put it down. We just replaced the $6 million one down, $600,000 one down the street. Right. Yep. Doesn't hurt me to put bridges in. And I, I mean, the state red flags them anyway if they don't pass. <laughs> this one says 50, so. We'll put them down for 40 and we'll call it the mean between the two. <laughs> bridges 40, 50, years. it's 70? <laughs> it's 60. <laughs> right. <laughs> 60 years. Lucky. 60 years for I know, since oh, I've right. been around, we've replaced several. Oh, I know, you know we've got... once and I've been here, and I have been here. We've got, a, years, yeah. we've got a number still being replaced. No. The only thing I would add to this is a date. Yeah. Of when it's approved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when it was signed. Mm -hmm. Well, and then it, I hate to make work for you, but it would be nice to have an asset list. <laughs> uh, with, it's, yeah, it's being worked on. Got it. With the actual. Mm -hmm. What's in it? No, the actual expiration of, you know, if it's only good for 20 years, what's that date coming up? So we bring up. I just yeah. sent out a capital asset list to the departments to tell me what needed to be added or removed. Because we found that out when we were going through Primax, they wanted an asset list. Yep. Are we all happy on the uh, capital asset policy reveal? Yep. Okay. And next we have disposal of surplus property policy review. There was one, and that was dated back in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, seems it should be reminded if, if that, if everything on that seems to be still the way we would like it. It should probably be forwarded out to all departments. The only question is, um, was that thousand dollar limit for department heads to? It's a hundred. It's a hundred, and we've let department heads, but they've always come here first for approval. So. Well, if we want to make changes to it, we should make changes to it and send it out. 
Well, that's the only thing I'm asking. I mean, have you known of anything that's been sold of any? I haven't, because the person who usually sells comes to us and says, I want to sell this, and we say yay or nay. Right. It doesn't go out to a process, so it's not listed and right. advertised and all that. So that's my question about whether you want any changes in it. I mean, I think, you know, $100 today isn't very much when you're selling a piece of product. Uh, I certainly wouldn't want to have to have them go through a process of spending $60 to advertise something to get, if you're lucky, 100 bucks for it. That right. doesn't make much sense. Um, should that be increased? I think you could easily go to 500 Go to 500. That's a common deductible thing that's prepared nowadays. Like any any like cake things would be. Well, it says the Board of Selectmen shall declare items, vehicles, and or equipment to be surplus property. It's the responsibility of the department head to notify the Board of Selectmen of the items within their department that may be declared as surplus. And then we say, get rid of them or don't get rid of them. Mm -hmm. But, like you said, if they've got a push mower that they want to get rid of, or a hundred bucks, or fifty, or it costs it costs four hundred. So they want to get see if they can get three hundred out of it because it's a self-propelled. Why do they have to come here to say, "Can I do that?" You know, if they if things are sold, any surplus items, do we have to accept that money? Probably should. As unanticipated funds. Aren't we accepting any money? No, not all money. Okay. Sometimes it just gets. Is there a limit on that money? Is there a limit on it? Except in I mean, like unanticipated no. funds? No, no. there's okay. no limit. All right. That would be the only thing to add into that, so people know that any funds that are received will be accepted as unanticipated yeah. funds at a selectman's meeting. Right. That's the only other caveat I'd add to this policy, so that it's out there and everybody knows that if you're selling it, the funds come in. Not to say that we can't say, like Highway, they sell something, but they're selling it so they can offset something they bought. Right. We, we accept the funds, and like we do with then, the sewer, then we say to be placed know. in the highway department budget. Then you've got a full trace of where it's going. Um, the one thing on accepting any amount of funds, if it's over a certain amount, you have to have a public hearing. Public hearing. So okay. That's all I would put in there is that terminology that, you know, we, ex we will accept it as unanticipated funds unless it meets under RSA, whatever, whatever that has, that requires a public hearing. Yeah. I, I think that it should be important that the uh, department head notifies the Board of Selectmen any time they, they sell a product under the $500, mm -hmm. and then they must get permission to sell any product over $500. Yeah, they can put that in there too. That makes sense. You know. Well, well it does. It says that, that all other surplus items shall be disposed by um, uh, the, the selectmen shall determine the appropriate procedures for disposal of the items case by case. Right, because it might be something that you'd want to put out to bid or you might right. want to just but plate I, as as you can. I agree where it says the department heads are authorized to dispose of surplus items valued at less than, if we're going to change it, to $500 without the prior approval of the Tamar Board of Selectmen, but they must inform the Board of Selectmen that the item has been sold. Right. Yeah. Just so that there's a, a tracking of it. Yeah. You know, where did that snowblower go? Oh, I sold that four years ago to John Smith or whatever, you know, that type of thing. Seems it is a town piece of property. So you got that, Karen? Yep. <laughs> yep. Do we want signatures on the bottom of that one? Mm -hmm. I'm going to add that. Well, that that's yeah, that's where it's confusing. Whether you need signatures or on everything, or if you need a signature page that the entire policies have been reviewed every five years with a signature page. It depends on what you want to do. But yeah, I would put signatures on. Yep. Yeah. Might as well. Okay, is everybody happy with the disposal of surplus property? Moving on to estimated revenues. Pretty close. 
Yeah. The only question I had, and Karen and I were sort of, if you look back at what was sent out, I actually took the papers and uh, the, the payments from BSMI that she was able to do on the revenues, and it actually converted for me, which is really odd. It converted into an Excel sheet, which nice. was even odder. But when you went in there and looked, and it's probably just me, in 219 it listed our tax income as $1 million. The paperwork she had sent us out. And 220 were $8 million. That 219 does not, we were talking about this, does not make sense. So, just in your gonders, if you happen to see that, something's off there. I'm not mistaken, right? It didn't say 11, it said 1. Yep. Yeah, 1400000 But yet, we're $8 million this year on tax. Yeah. That's, that's real estate tax. We only collected a million on taxes. Is that what's collected versus what we're, the full budget is looking at? Or? I don't think that uh, property taxes were in there. Yeah, property taxes are not listed in our revenue. Right. The ones you sent me that I sent back to you, what was that? It said revenue. It was on the revenue paper you sent me. Yes, it is. It's on the revenue report from BMSI, but it's not. Right. Well, that's what I'm concerned so about. It's BSMI not with this. said in 219 there was a million. BSMI in 220 says there's 8 million. <clears throat> but we were close when she and I, when I sent her my things. Right, yeah, no, I mean, it was, we were, what, $300,000 or something. Yeah. Really close. So. Yeah, no, the. The property taxes shouldn't be listed in the mm -hmm. uh, revenue. I mean, if we get it more than that, God love us. Because your taxes are based off what your other revenue is. Yeah. I just don't think we can base it off much more than that. You know, I hate to go higher than I, that. I wouldn't go higher. I wouldn't. Okay, everybody set with estimated revenues for 2021? Yep. Uh, next is administrative updates. Karen. We do have that other um, policy that Becky sent out right after I sent out the agenda, the non-discrimination <laughs> statement. Oh, oh. Yeah. Do you want to look at that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> do you have it? I don't have it. But I read it. So this is a non-discrimination statement and policy. And I'll read it, it's fairly short. The town of Tamworth does not and shall not discriminate on the base of race, color, religion, creed, gender, gender expression, age, national origin, ancestry, disability, marital status, sexual orientation, or military status in any of its activities or operations. These activities include, but are not limited to, hiring and firing of staff, selection of volunteers and vendors, and provision of services. We are committed to providing an inclusive and welcoming environment for all members of our staff, clients, volunteers, subcontractors, vendors, and clients. The Town of Tamworth is an equal opportunity employer. We will not discriminate and will take affirmative action measures to ensure against discrimination in the employment, recruitment, advertisements for employment, compensation, termination, upgrading, promotions, and other conditions of employment against any employee or job applicant on basis of race, color, gender, national origin, age, religion, creed, disability, veteran status, sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression. And again, that was because that Primex had suggested we asked, we did not have a non, we don't have a non-discrimination policy in our personnel manual, and that was one of their suggestions to place in. So again, if we're happy with it, I think maybe send it off to Primex, make sure they're happy with it, and then adopt it next meeting. 
Sounds good to me. Yeah. Um, so, unless there's objection to sending that out, uh, if that could be sent to Climax for final review. Okay, thank you. Okay, now okay. bank balance is $3,135,993, and that includes the AP run that you'll sign. Um, Glenn was asking about advertising for a per diem transfer station attendant since we lost uh, Will Robinson. Um, is that okay to send out and start advertising? Yeah, didn't we get just, an application in not just long? Yeah, one. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think having a bank of people that we can get yep. per diem. on yep. call is, is good. I'll put it on your webpage if you okay. send me the job description. Yep. Um, we did receive a resignation letter from Brenda Robinson um, because, of, you know, the. do you want me to read it? I guess I can. Sure. Dear Board of Selectmen, after a great deal of thought, I've decided to tender my resignation as director of the Tamworth Swim Program effective immediately. It has been my pleasure to interact with thousands of area kids over the years. I hope the board will continue to support this very vital program that has been in existence for over 80 years. With the pandemic still raging, it's anyone's guess as to whether the program can happen in 2021. I would like to recommend Jessica Cullen as my successor. I would be happy to help with the transition in any way that I can. Um, I did draft a thank you letter to her for you guys to sign tonight. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate that. I make a motion we accept uh, Brenda's resignation as the swim instructor. Second. Any further comment? Thank you, Brenda, for all yeah, Thank you, Brenda. Yeah. I worked hard in 1942 when the program was out at White Lake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, uh, yeah, Brenda's taught a lot of a lot of kids how to swim, yeah. swim, stay alive in the water. It's very important. Very so important. Thank you very much, Brenda, and uh, with regret, we accept your resignation. And she just didn't teach them how to swim. She made sure she didn't just pass them through the ranks. She made sure they knew how to swim. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and thank you for drafting a thank you letter back to us. Yep. Do we have to vote? Roll call vote. Streeter, yes. Goodson, yes. Gregory, yes. Mason, yes. Farnham, yes. Unanimous decision. Okay. Uh, Northern New, uh, New England Solar Gardens um, reached out to me today. They're going to be surveying, uh, maybe starting next week or pretty soon, um, for about one to three weeks at the old landfill. So if you see any activity over there. They're going to start doing that. Um, I did speak with Rick from the Carroll County Rec Department on what that $275 uh, dues re um, includes. And it's, um, you know, to help hold all the tournaments that they do for all the sports. And because nothing is really going on right now, they want to invest in more equipment for the events, like portable scoreboards and things like that. I did, um, I asked you know, how we participated in the past because I haven't been here. And he said we were in almost all the tournaments. And, um, you know, Parker actually held some tournaments in town so that we were a vital part of this program. Mm -hmm. um, I did ask if we can skip a year because of COVID, but he, he said there's no guarantee you get back in. So it's $275. Um, and if you guys approve, I'll just put it in the check run for next week. His comment, would you say his comment again, please? I think I heard you rightly. If they skip a year, there we may not guarantee you to get back in the following year. They limit it to how many people can be a part of it? Or, yeah, that was his answer. And what they want to do is they want to buy portables and Scoreboards? They want to no. They want to invest in equipment that will help facilitate facilitate the tournaments better. You know, like um, portable scoreboards. Portable scoreboards. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> you know, things like that, just to help. Two hundred seventy-five bucks. Well, I 
money in. Yeah, I, yeah, I, mean, I just, I just so. think the comment that he made about we may not let you back in. I mean, that just seems, yeah, I mean, it is, it is Carroll County. <laughs> But we're still going to be right. here. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, just, it is an interesting comment, I agree. Because it just doesn't seem like... wasn't a very friendly comment. Yeah, all for one and all that. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, we need uh, I mean, a motion on that, folks. Make a motion that we pay to uh, Carroll County Rec Association, I believe it is. Uh, $275 annual year's dues. Second. Roll call vote. Street, yes. yes. Goodson, yes. Gregory, yes. Mason, yes. Vernon, yes. Unanimous decision. And um, Becky had asked me to reach out to Avatar um, because it wasn't showing on the tax cards when you printed out if they were on public water or sewer. And that was a, a software fix, and that's all set. And sure. that's and I've just been busy working on the town report. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're on to the signature file. First, we have the minutes from Fe Thursday, February 18th. Selectman's minutes, motion to approve. Second. Any errors, admissions, corrections, comments? Roll call vote. Street yes. Goodson yes. Gregory yes. Mason yes. Farnham yes. Unanimous decision. Next we have session one of non-public session February 18th under RSA 91A 32C. Are not sealed. Motion to approve. Second. <coughs> Questions, comments, corrections? Roll call vote. Street yes. Goodson yes. Gregory yes. Mason yes. Barnum, yes. <coughs> Unanimous decision. Next, we have session number two, February 18th, under RSA 91A, 32C. And they are not sealed. Motion to approve. Second. Any questions, comments? Roll call vote. Street, yes. Captain, yes. Berger, yes. Mason, yes. Barnum, yes. Unanimous decision. Next, we have a accounts payable. In the amount of two hundred sixty-one thousand seven hundred eighty-eight dollars and thirty-two cents, cash used to date one million five hundred eighty-four thousand three hundred forty-three dollars and nine cents, and in the accounts payable, the school portion is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Motion to approve. Second. Questions, comments. All those in favor, signify by roll call vote. Street, yes. Kristen, yes. Gregory, yes. Mason, yes. Barnum, yes. Unanimous decision. Karen, could you send me that? Yep. So I can put it in for the six months. Okay. Uh, next, we have a application for a tax exemption for solar for MAP 404. Lot 42. Uh, the solar exemption is $31,500. Motion to approve. Second. Questions? What did you say the exemption was? Solar. No, no. The amount? The amount, $31,500. I'm, con I'm confused. I understand current use. I understand. How do they figure the solar? Is that... That's what's taken off their taxes. That's the value they place on the solar, System. and then to get it, the exemption that comes off. Right, so on the size of the system. Right, it's based on the size, based on of, the size of the system. But how do they evaluate? I'm confused as how that evaluation, what it adds to the assessment. How is it assessed for taxes? That's what I haven't gotten. I know we get the exemptions. I know we talked about, you know, the ones out on Maple Road and stuff, but how do they assess that? There, there is a formula that okay. they use okay. on how many uh, kilowatts it, it 
does, and whether it's a roof mount or a ground mount, I mean, there's a, there's a bunch That's of different fine. things. That's fine. As long as there's something in place, it's, it's state, right. stable throughout the state. That's what I wanted to know. Um, okay. I'll just look it up. I know at one point they uh, wanted you to turn in your slips on what it cost sure. you uh, to build it. I refused to do that. I said, no, you assess it for what it's worth, because I well, did a lot of the work myself, so therefore it wasn't on the bill. Well, and that's what I said when I brought up the two places on Maple Road, that the houses are now removed. I just wondered what we're gaining, losing in taxes by losing the house that is yeah. assessed versus assessing a solar field. That's what I was trying to get in my mind. Which means I just have to sit. Road. Huh? So you didn't lose much on Maple Road. Well, no, I know that, but. Um, okay, so uh, roll call vote on this. Judy, yes. Goodson, yes. Berger, yes. Mason, yes. Barnum, yes. Unanimous decision. Uh, next, we have a solar exemption in the amount of $30,000. And this would be for. Uh, where's the van? 403. 404. Oh, three. Motion 403. What? It's 404. Lot 3. No, 403. Oh, no, that's why I'm asking. 404. Lot 3. We had 403. Lot 3. That's what I was asking. There was, yeah. 404. You seconded that? I did second that. And now we'll have roll call vote. Judy, yes. Goodson, yes. Berger, yes. Mason, yes. Barnum, yes. Unanimous decision. Next, we have a administrative abatement for map 214, lot 154, sublot 36. And the amount to be abated is $218. This was a camper that was removed in 2019. And that bill had not been paid, so this credit should uh, be applied. Motion to approve. Second. Questions? Roll call vote. Street, yes. Fitzen, yes. Berger, yes. Mason, yes. Barnum, yes. Unanimous decision. Next, we have an, another administrative abatement for MAP 214, lot 154, sublot 47, <coughs> in the amount of $290. This camper has been registered, so therefore it's not a taxable property. This tax bill has not been paid, so credit should be applied. Motion to approve. Second. A roll call vote. Street a yes. Fifteen yes. Burger yes. Mason yes. Far yes. Unanimous decision. Uh, next we have an abatement for map 208, lot 17. And this is an adjustment in the property value. And the amount to be abated is $768.82. Uh, after review by the assessor, the property should be changed and a refund should be issued as the property had been, the tax had been paid. Motion to approve. Second. A roll call vote. Street, yes. Fifth yes. Burger, yes. Mason, yes. Farnham, yes. Unanimous decision. We have an abatement for MAP 408, lot 53. Uh, due, to an error, uh, due to a data error, the property had been mistakenly assessed for solar panels in 2020. Uh, tax to be refunded as it had been paid, and the amount to be abated is seven hundred and fifty-nine dollars and eighty-two cents. Motion to approve. Second. A roll call vote. Street a yes. Bitson yes. Berger yes. Mason yes. Barnum yes. Unanimous decision. And next we have a an abatement for map two one six lot two 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 in the amount of three hundred and forty. $8.44. Property should have been merged with lot uh, 221. And the tax has been paid, and issue should be made in the amount of $348.44. Motion to approve. Second. 
And roll call vote. Streety, yes. Bitson, yes. Gregory, yes. Mason, yes. Barnum, yes. Unanimous decision. We have administrative abatement for map 401, lot 29, in the amount of $7. The parcel was merged with uh, parcel 401, lot 30, and should not have been issued a tax bill for this parcel. This tax bill has not been paid, so credit should be applied. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call vote. Street yes. Goodson yes. Burger yes. Mason yes. Farm yes, unanimous decision. We have done our signature file. Selectman's updates. I'm going right to left for me. Okay. Right to left. Go ahead now. <laughs> um <laughs> I have been taking pictures of the ice on the roof because when I did meet with the two roof people last year, it was 100 degrees out. And they really, if we're going to go forward with a new roof, they wanted to see what the ice looked like. And it's been spectacular. <laughs> um, the other thing on, I have signed up, Drummond and Woodsum is having a Zoom webinar for um, March 11th, um, COVID, vaccines, quarantines, and compliance. Um, so I did sign up for that. The other question I have is the light bulbs downstairs in the box to recycle. How many more do we need to get that? Till it's full. Till it's full. Yeah, we send it full, whatever we can get in it. Okay. Is there a lot more room now? I don't know. There isn't much more room, but a little bit maybe. And does um, the library have any bulbs? I can ask them. The other thing, um, I was thinking after last week's meeting when we talked about all the binders and the printer cartridges, if some nice sunny day I can put on the exchange and wherever, hey. Anybody want a binder? They're out in the backyard. Did we ask the department heads, like we said? I've gotten zero responses. Okay. I mean, we'll save some, and we're not going to get rid of them. But I yeah. mean, there's like so many. Too many. Yeah. So is it okay if we have like a non-yard sale in the backyard? And Three the days. other thing I would like to maybe it's getting rid of surplus property is we have zillions of office chairs everywhere. Do we need this many office chairs? I'm trying to remember what the whole story was about how we wound up with so many chairs. I think they keep growing. Two departments <laughs> bought chairs. <laughs> they got ergonomically correct chairs versus the chair like I'm sitting in that's sitting on the ground right now. So we've grown they always bought and never released. How many are out there? Well, there's one, there's like two, two three, and two. there's an extra one in the office in there. Are they this one. Still downstairs, aren't they? I don't know. I didn't go that far. But the library can't use them. Planning board, five members and two alternates, and seven chairs. We've got seven in this room alone. Right. But that's they need if they want in here. Well, I say, but we've got seven in this room alone, plus one out, one or two out in the hallway. Two. And Do they have public comments? And four in the office. Yeah, with public okay. comments, we use the regular folding chairs. When we're set up, those are usually set up. I mean, I don't know. Some are broken. Well, the broken ones get rid of them. Yeah. Uh, broke, I mean, they've got one arm still. Well, they took one arm no. off. Didn't they? <laughs> Maybe we can find the other arm. <laughs> well, no, I think if they're broken, we can probably dispose of them. Right. Well, that's well, that's what I'm asking. Some is people it's took just their arms off because they didn't want hitting their file cabinet as they were. But if we don't know where the arms are, then they're get rid of it. Yeah. Right. 
So I can have a non-yard sale? As far as I'm concerned. Well, it just, it's just going to wipe the load. We get to the point where we have just so much stuff. Well, and then all of the light bulbs, the ones that yep. you mentioned downstairs yep. that aren't going to be recycled, but they'll... They're they're good good right, but yeah, somebody must have bulbs never been used. Yeah. So. so some non-windy, sunny, warm, warm yes, no. day. Warm. <laughs> it just we'll it gets the heat. yes. We'll take the heat for it now. Yeah. <laughs> Don't that. put anything out there that we <laughs> that you <laughs> want. <laughs> yeah, well, it just it's, it's kind of like it just. Too. There's a lot that's been saved that really doesn't have to be saved. Uh, well. I found from 2000 a coupon to Minuteman Press for $10 <laughs> off your next order. Try to catch it? No. <laughs> yeah. I, will, I will ask the library about their bulbs. And Don't then, put it in the yard sale either. No. <laughs> and that is on the hazardous waste light bulbs old business. Are we going to get... That was mentioned, what, a long time ago, Becky, about getting some containers to put at... Because that was a big hot item. People couldn't get rid of their light bulbs. And I know Glenn said, well, there's so many different brands. Well, there, there are two kinds of brands. Wow. There are tubes that are long, and then they sell round buckets for everything else. The light bulbs, the circular bulbs, they all go into a bucket. Yeah. Same place you get... I don't know if you can get the buckets at Home Depot, but the same place we get the boxes, you can order them. Yeah. Do Maybe when it's warm, warm come the spring. I mean, that's why we got well, the one, I, right? To I see. think, you know, Glenn needs to be on board with doing it if it's going to happen at the transfer station. But didn't you also come across something that said that we should at least be able to provide townspeople with an avenue to go. To well, the townspeople were on the exchange so complaining there's no right place to get rid of fluorescent a box. Bulbs. Huh? So they can go right online and get a box or right. a bucket. Right, that's that's what I said. It's at, we can get it, they can get it. Right, at Lowe's. Right. I mean, that's been on old business, and I was just, do we get them for down there or uh, I, I would, I would skip it at this point for the transfer station um, okay you know we we put money in the budget for has this way stay again so yep okay hopefully it'll happen and so can, once the, if, do I have permission that once that box is full I can oh yeah send, once it's oh, yeah. full we'll, I can send it out yep mm -hmm. okay yep I'll go looking <laughs> find some bulbs I might have a couple <laughs> <laughs> we have a store, so. <laughs> a lot. Um, okay. Well, I That's checked it. at least with the fire department, so I can't make any books. Okay. Yeah, what other places might have fluorescent? Well, that's what I said. Library, the fire, fire department. They have fluorescent in theirs. Yep. Highway garage. Yep. I don't yeah, know really how many that. more it will take. My guess is it will take four or five. Yeah. Oh. Well, then probably I'll call one more. I mean, I don't know. Does Glenn have a fluorescent light in the building there? No idea. Well, and then it's like, does the town want to keep investing in these boxes because we have so many that we're going to need to dispose of ourselves? Well, I mean, another I think year the box was what? Pick like another box. box. I can't remember the exact price of something. I think like it was something. But didn't like we that. get it because we had a lot in our basement? So oh, I think yeah. we should be like a little proactive instead of reactive on it in the future. So like I mean keep a box down there that we can put your old bulbs in instead of going through the thousand of bulbs down there and wondering which ones are good no good right. and which ones right. are good. Exactly. If you're gonna do that why don't you just save this box for our light bulbs here? Instead of trying to get rid of it. Well there's only four more. It's almost full. Yeah. She's saying just there, get there's another one box, box that we got the recycled I mean, box. Right. that there's need to be disposing. Full. The other ones are brand new bulbs. So yeah, but didn't you just say get another box to keep down there for like... Oh. So well, just for future ones, because yeah. what so I'm saying is like... we're going to do that, why don't we just she can't keep that even box reach out to and we go with four of our own? But the department heads are all, all town people. <laughs> just saying. But it's going to be full before we even contact all the departments. Didn't you just change some light bulbs? Yeah, some. And they're down there? Yeah, put them in the box. Right, you put them in the box. That's what I'm saying. It's like, once this box goes out, let's get another one. And, and let's not buy more bulbs. 
Because really what these should be changed out is to LEDs. The ballast should come out of them and the uh, bulbs should be taken out. So these bulbs should all go away. Right. So all they, and all and they just LEDs. don't want to <laughs> So they can go away. Anyway. Boy, that's it. Go ahead. Uh, just the rec committee met. We're working on our presentation to us. <laughs> so that's all I think. Nothing else worth talking about. You good as far as March fifth? That's the end. Is, is I you still planning really, it? Yeah. Like what that's I'm asking at so. every meeting, so we're gonna present on that Thursday after March fifth. So that's okay. whatever day that is. I can look on my calendar, I guess. But yeah, but that's all we're really working on because we're just trying to get ready. Wrapped up. Good. Aaron. I finally got a hold of Darren, the one that I was telling you guys that's really good with grants with transfer stations. Yeah. Uh, he can either come next week or the following week, whenever we want him, and he said just give him a time. Okay. And what was his name? His name's Darren. I can't pronounce Darren. his last name. How about next week? Yep. Yeah. I've got a lot of information I've gathered. I told him I'd give him a call in the morning tomorrow. And he said, yeah, either the 4th or I think the 11th is the next two meetings. Is he all right with meeting at 6? He said whatever. He said, just let me know when you want me in there. He goes, I don't know. Yep. He knows how boards work. He knows what time they're at. So. Yep. I say next week at 6 would be great. All righty. Okay. I will uh, call him in the morning. Do you want to email me his last name so I can put him on the email? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, if for some reason he's got something scheduled. Then scheduled no, I saw, him, I saw him yesterday. So... Good. That's, uh, that's all I got. Okay. Becky, obviously you've done quite a few things yes. here. I sent out to everybody the safety data sheet software mm -hmm. that I had found. Um, it can be ran by um, phone, computer, whatever. It's not a real, it's not the real, real, real expensive program. It's a it's a basic or standard program for $69 to $99 a month. It sounds like a lot, but the program that I know has that was purchased before was over $500 a month. I think if, I think maybe if we could start out with a $69 a month, I mean, you can quit. You don't have to sign up for a year or anything. And see if it works for, like, the fire department, the um, highway, the transfer station, because they're the ones that see the most chemicals that they've got to have the sheets on. Right. I mean, the last time I asked Richard to update his sheets, I, I ended up printing off over 85 pages, and I still hadn't made it through his first full page of these are the products we've changed to. Um, so you can either print it off, or you can just leave it on your computer and access it from the computer or anybody's mobile phone. They can put the app on their, fo their phone if they want, and they can access it at a scene if they need it. So this doesn't necessarily have, this has all the stuff that's out there right. in their database. Right. So if you happen to if you have to go out and, and buy pick up a bottle thing, of... XYZ, you can punch it in and find out all you need to know about it. And they do five updates per month. They add, if anything comes out within that month's time, they'll do five updates. So they're basically doing an update every week. Yeah. And some of these, um, the one I remember the worst is Dial Soap. It has like a 32 page SDS. And if you start printing all that out, yeah. Fire chief is supposed to have everything that's involved in your town, every chemical that's involved in any of your municipal buildings and stuff. I just think maybe to it's. So I, this, this would have it. I, well, that's why I'd like to just try it at the sixty-nine dollar a month. If it doesn't have what we want, then maybe we need to look at the more upgraded plans. If it does, then. But I guess we don't have to put. It. Input the data of what we have. No, it's all there. Yeah, okay. Uh, but, again, I think this, what I sent you guys, maybe send it out to the fire chief and, you know, highway and stuff and let them look and see if it's something that would be workable. It's $699 a year for the basic. Yeah. We can't print paper enough for all the SDS sheets that should be, I mean, this, this building needs it. Townhouse, we print it out for what they do, but every time you change a chemical or the company changes the name, 
Yep. You have to have a new one. That's why we got rid of dial soap down at the townhouse. I think it was actually 48 pages. Yeah, it, it grew. That is the worst thing for an SDS sheep there is. And if you <laughs> get it with hexachlorophene, forget it. Yeah. The antibacterials kill you. So that's one thing yeah. I did. The second thing is, uh, I've got to go back well, to my calendar here. Literally. Let, let's, let's address that. Uh, let's, I'll make a motion that we uh, send it out to the department heads. Send it out heads. to the department heads to see if, in fact, they uh, feel this is a would help them keep up their SDS requirements. Second. Both of both? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. Yes and yes. Pardon, yes. You know, this is okay. The Thank other you. thing is they're doing on the fourth, I think. I'm taking the three hour <laughs> don't ask me why, the three hour health officers training. 101. Uh, actually, this one's an hour. Uh, because now the law has it's gone from House bill to committee review for more detail to go to vote by the end of next month about health officers requiring training now, not just being able to say, you know, you're off the street and you the three hours of training a year or 30 hours or whatever they were going to do. So I'm planning on taking the first installment of that on uh, March 4th. Thank you. And my only other question is, would it be possible for us to ask him for a list of all town properties that are owned by the town and how long they've been owned? <coughs> I can't that list. Because they're off our tax rolls. Right. right. And I don't know how many... There's some that we end up paying association fees for, right. so they're actually costing us money. But yeah. eventually, if we get rid of them, they won't be caught. They we recoup that, you but they're costing us fees, money. Yes, I don't think it's been looked at for a while. It's not been looked at since I've been on the board. Even just getting them back into the tax, you know, stream is an increase in revenue. So, and then we get another thing off the whole business. Yep. And then my only other thing, because I deal in sewers so much, was uh, because of those dealings the other day, the sewer system is a lot worse than we thought it was because of the way a piece of property was listed for sale that our tax card says it has a certain number of bedrooms and it's listed to having many more bedrooms than what the tax card says. And I will, not, I will say this until I'm blue in the face because David Little said, garbage into our new system means garbage out. So I would like permission. I found four properties that have been listed that have totally different Actual. bedrooms. And, and like I know one, it says no extra kitchens, but there are four extra kitchens in the building because it's an apartment building. I would like to have permission to send them to Rod and ask him to have a reassessment on them. Because we're losing tax money, number one. Number two, I hate to say it, but it's really killed us in the septic department. I would imagine. Yeah. Um, so there's, I've found four so far, and this has just been people and changing. Yeah. And not in the septic area. <laughs> yeah, it's driving me crazy. Because now I have, we, we're going to try and keep the user rates the same as which well, right. we are. I mean, I would think that with you trying to do that, you almost need to know. And now we're going to recalculate everybody right. again because we jumped probably, we jumped another 600 gallons. Well, that's why I would think it would be reason to do a reassessment is because now the town is responsible for the septic and we need to know what's going in. Um, we're doing a quarter of the town a year at the present, right? That's my understanding. So. I don't know what was on schedule for this year. Whether I mean, that's why I said say, I'm just the town gonna, should be done. I'm going to send them to Rod and say these are the discrepancies. Could you double check? I'm not going to yep. say the advertising's right or whatever. All I'm right. just going to say, could you double check them? Yeah. <clears throat> because if it's if it's wrong in the advertisement and they think they could do something with it, but they can't. Then, as you right. said, you know, they can't come after the town, but they can go after the person who... Sold it. Right. 
So, mm -hmm. and then the only other thing I've been looking at is the building notification form. Because nowhere, it says, you know, not, you know do your building, if it's over 5000 you owe $100, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to increase any payments on our own people, but there's another revenue source there that we're losing, and people are not filing those. I, it was an ordinance, which the back of the ordinance is like five articles in that ordinance. Um, it only cost $100. So it doesn't matter if you're doing $5,000 or you're doing $825,000. You're paying the same amount. I personally don't think that's fair. I would be very upset to think I was paying $100 for my little $5,000 project and somebody else is paying $8,000. But I think we need to look at it because it does not notify the fire chief. It does say on there the fire chief has to approve a heating system in the directions. But nowhere is there a checkoff that says the assessor gets a copy the uh, fire chief gets a copy, the sewer system gets a copy, because now if it's on Main Street, it impacts the sewer as well. So I'd like to just change the form, not so much. I know the ordinance would have to go to town meeting, but if we could at least change the form to get those notifications correct and get it up on the website and maybe say, you know, it's there, because a lot of people don't realize we have that. We have no zoning in town, so they don't know we have a building notification right. program. Um. reason behind the fee regardless was so that the assessor would be paid to go out and assess your property when you made changes. That's, that's what Part it was all about. And, you know, no building inspector, so you aren't paying a building inspector to go out in different stages of the building, so. But at the same time, that was a long time ago that that was put in effect, I think like 206. Yeah. It, was, it was revised in 215, just the form a little bit. Yeah. That maybe we should really look at it. I mean, yeah. we look when I came on the board, everybody said we need to look for revenue sources, and we've got revenue sources, they're just not used. And yeah. it's a one-time fee. It's not like you're paying it over and over and over with each right. part of your project. You're right. paying it once to submit your project. Right. So, just something to think about. Yep, no, I, I think probably the form should be expanded so that you get the information about it's on town water, it's on town septic, it's on, you know. It's, or it's the a fire chief it's knows a it's being thing, done. So or therefore the fire chief needs to know about it, you know, I mean, all these things. So, um, that would probably be good. So that's it okay. for me. Thank you. Um, I, Gotten information from Freedom, Madison, Sandwich, uh, Tamworth, obviously, uh, on transfer station uh, volumes and also on their contracts and what they have now. I did not get over to Madison on Tuesday to see what their upshot was with theirs. I'll call them tomorrow and, and see if they'll send me their information. They went out to the RFP. Um, and I was talking with Glenn, and he was wondering where people are seeming to have a hard time getting their stickers, <clears throat> um, whether we could develop a policy where if you don't have a sticker, it's $5 per bag to dispose of it. Um, I guess I don't understand the problem having a sticker because I got my stickers with no problem. Well, but didn't we just make it so that there's a fee if you I don't? thought we were fining them. That the, yeah. yeah. That the police were going to send them a fine. We just kind of revamped I'd have to relook at yeah. that policy, but I thought well, we'd actually I, say I, what the fine was going to be in the policy. Maybe I thought it was going to be a dollar fine. throwing it out because I guess a lot of people are finding that, gee, I can't get in and get a sticker. And I suggested that we put a big sign up down there saying, what the if you don't have a sticker May 1st, you're not dumping your trash. Yeah, period. or there is a... a big period after it. And yeah. they'll get the message. And they and I said Actually, you can hand out the form that they can mail in to get their sticker. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's... I mean, I don't understand it. It's everywhere. Kim's even got it under how you do the e-registration and do your taxes now. You just yeah. push the button and it comes out. So anyway, I said I'd bring it up. And it's fifty dollars. The fine is fifty dollars yeah, if you don't have a sticker. So, so you know Well no, you don't dump. Yeah. That's a big thing. You don't but dump if you without do a dump, it's a 
$50 fine. Because remember we said, we're not going to get into this about them getting into a tapping contest about right. whether they dump or they don't dump. If they dump, they get the $50 fine. I thought Glenn was supposed to hand out papers. Just the thing that we signed said... He's, he's got some. I, it just this came up, and I just am bringing it up, but I can pretty much tell him how things are going to be now. I like your idea. Put no sticker, no dump. Yep. Period. Dump. Well, then you're going to change the policy. I was just going to say, we just changed the policy saying... Well, no. Because no. it says on the policy, to use the transfer station, you will have a sticker. And if you use it without having a sticker, you'll get $50 fine. Right. Absolutely. Well, so I was going to tell him you're not dumping if they're going to be... A Jerk about it. Okay, dump. I'm gonna take your license plates and down, and I'm gonna have the last lap. Well, she didn't rid of that. If they pull up and they don't have a sticker, it's an automatic write down the license plate. They get a fifty dollar fine. That's how it was written. <coughs> yeah. If you do not have a displayable sticker, the yeah, license plate will be down. taken because we didn't want to get into you this shouting dump match. If you don't have a sticker. And if you do, there but will be a fifty dollar fine. And you don't have a sticker, and he says, "Sorry, you need a sticker." But what if you borrowed and you and recycled out. all your stuff, and now he sees that you don't have your sticker at the container, but you've already dumped all your recycling? Then what happens? Fifty dollar fine. Thank you very much. We need revenue. So well, that's, that's what, what we said. It's a fifty dollar fine. fine. They don't have, because we didn't want them getting into a shouting match about you can't dump or you got to pay me this or whatever. I think it's more or less if you come in, you see you don't have stickers, they it's can't dump, and then. They just leave. You can't find them for right. not doing anything. So they just, they just left. Yeah. But, yeah, they, but there's they a the sign at the bottom that says that you have to have a pass yeah, in order to dump there. Right. But if there's one right by... We need a big reminder. Right. Unfortunately. And I think that the reminder should say, if you dump here without a pass, you get a $50 fine. So that there's accountability. So that it's not just like, oh, well... What if I get away with it? Well, you won't get away with it because there's accountability. I don't want to give them the option of dumping. I but you know that people might want to dump. <laughs> May I make a comment? Sure. Sorry. We're, 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 there's we're, an article in the uh, Sun about Madison and the same issue there. And um, what they said was Without those stickers, you'll be turned away or charged money per bag, regardless of how many bags you were able to stuff in the back of the family station wagon. So they're going through something similar. But I do think where we just signed this policy, I mean, it must have been a couple months ago that we signed it, that we should just uphold this yeah, policy. Does, yeah. does Ann McGarry still do the Tam with Colin? I don't know. Yes, yeah, she does. she does. It's not all, it's not every week, but. It's every other week. Yeah. So maybe if we contact Ann McGarity and get it in the Tamworth column. A reminder. Because yep. the whole thing, we didn't want them getting into a shouting match with anybody. It's if they don't have a sticker and they're dumping, you're not going to confront them. You're just going to write down their license plate and we send them a $50 fine. And if they don't pay the fine, then it increases each time up to $500. At every 14 days, it increases. Well, and that's what it's also it's just a uphold the policy we just made, or edit the policy. But where we just did it, it's like, let's just. Fine. Done. Good. Thank you. Uh, anything else from the board? Second public comment? Nothing further. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's just bring up another question is, do you guys have any idea when you're going to open the building back up so people like can just come in and get a sticker or, I mean, supposedly the cases are down 77% or something. I mean, how far do they have to go down before we open up buildings? Transmission rate in Carroll County is still up over, t is still up to 10.43% and they they're still calling it substantial, and the only reason I know that is because I'm going on what the count, the nursing homes have to do, and until the transmission rate comes below 10, it's not considered a substantial transmission. I think since Johnson & Johnson has increased their, is now going to be part of the vaccines, and they're going to be giving it to more and more people, 3% of the state's been vaccinated. Right, no. Not much. What percent has already had 
three percent. No, had had. But money. you can get it again. You don't only get it once. Well, there's different strands now. Yeah, the California strand, the New York strand, of which they've discovered that no vaccine works against the, well, the New York strand. Anyway, so never mind that. Um, the light in the South Table Fire Station is still on all day long. Thank you. That was one of the other things I did Tuesday. As I went over to the fire station with an electrician to look at putting lights on the building so that we could take a, a, a shotgun to that <laughs> street light. Um, and fix it permanently. Um, I know, I'd probably get in trouble now if somebody goes over and shoots a damn thing. Um, but um, anyway, so I, I haven't got a price yet back on that, but there'd be two wall sconces shining down on the building, which would give enough light out into the parking lot, wouldn't blind somebody coming down the road. Um, and you and turn it on and off in the building. It would come on at dusk and go off at dawn. It'd be automatic. So, anyway, I haven't gotten the price on that. I will yell back at the uh, company that puts the sign up, I mean the uh, light up, and uh, see if I can tweak them some more. I had a conversation two and a half, three weeks ago with them. And they say, yeah, 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 and we haven't gotten the solved problem yet. But anyway, thank you for reminding me about that. And the other thing is, are you guys ever going to have department heads come back to meetings? We have had them every once in a while come back in. Very seldom. We were doing it about, we were doing it once a month. Yeah, we had it on a schedule. We just need to get back on the schedule so now the budget's over and stuff. We were doing it. Oh, well, they used to be here every week before, I mean, before you well, guys left. I mean, they were here every week, and, yeah. and I know that with COVID you slowed them down, but I mean, I just think that the people that watch the video or anybody else, you don't know what's happening in all the facts. Thank you. I think that's it. Just Anything one else? Yeah, just one other thing that we are in the gate in again, because we don't have somebody that does it. The uh, flags are at half staff, by the way. Yes. The flags are at half staff, by the way, until yeah. Friday. Yeah. Check out. I know this one's down. Yeah. That's not our only flag here. Well, the townhouse one is down. So, I, another reason to have a handyman to run around and yeah, drop all the flags down. I thought I'd signed up for that, and I came through the other day and noticed it was down. Didn't get the notification, I guess. I got um, at my Governor Sununu email, went into my junk mail, but Damon Steers knocked on the door asking why our flag wasn't down. And I said, well, I don't know why. Why does it need to be down? I didn't know. Right. And his editor has a had asked him to drive around and take pictures of flagpoles. So I, uh, con I contacted Richard because I had him on the phone so anyway. Did. And so he came down and did these that. two. So, yeah, I didn't put in my junk folder. So. Yeah. Okay, maybe I should look at my junk folder. Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, so I'm like, all right, well, thanks for letting me know. Yeah. I'll get on it. Well, I didn't hear it either, and it was a flood, of, it was a federal requirement. It, wasn't. it was federal, not state. Okay. Right. So, but right. they can go back up on Friday, uh, Saturday. Okay, thank you. Anything else from the board? Make a motion we adjourn the meeting. Second. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you you know have no problem. That? Undisputable. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Everybody happy with that? If you're not and happy with that, speak now for the whole debate. 712? Yep. Unanimous decision. Thank you. We are adjourned at 712 p.m. Yeehaw.